Today we're going to take a look at a very, very cool bus compressor, the Audioscape AS78. I am pumped about it. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm Cool Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Now, I have been wanting one of these since they announced it a year ago at NAMM. I saw it in the rack. I didn't know it was coming out, but I saw it in the rack when I first got to NAMM uh, before the show even started on the first day last year in 2023, yes. And I was instantly like, I have to have one of these. Now, I don't think it's any secret that this is a some sort of copy of a original Universal Audio 1178, but they have done a couple things to this that make it way more useful and really bring it into the modern world. They really brought it into the modern era with a couple things like a side chain, a high pass side chain, and a mix knob, which is like, what more could you want? So I've spent a bit of time with this and I think it sounds absolutely incredible and is actually in the running to become my new primary drum bus compressor. But I may have to do a video, a drum bus compressor shootout video soon because I just, I think it'll be a cool video and I'd love to actually compare them in a, in a more clinical setting like I do for these videos. So obviously we're gonna take a listen to it on drum bus. We're also gonna take a listen to it on acoustic guitar and we, we may play around with some other instruments as well just to try to give you guys the full breadth of what this thing is great at. Now it does have a couple quirks. You would think that this functions like two independent 1176s with the same attack and release settings, and it does not. It's not 100% independent, which is interesting. Now, in all fairness, it's been a really long time since I have used an 1178. It's probably been six years since I've actually had hands-on with one, and I've never used one in a very clinical, like checking it out for a video type of setting. I, I dig a lot further into these products for these videos than I do just in a session. But Chris, the owner of Audioscape, I had a, a quick chat with him about the couple of quirks that this has, and I'll explain them all as we work through it. And he assured me that this is exactly how the original 1178 operates, uh, that it is a quirky machine, uh, and it, it does have a few interesting things about it. So I'm gonna make sure that I point those out to you, but this is a stunning, stunning compressor, and I am so pumped about it. And that mix knob, that does a thing specifically for drum bus, that is really, really integral to how I operate in my mixes anyway. I'm gonna explain to you this technique. So let's get into it and take a listen to this thing. Okay, so let me explain these controls to you before we actually get into some sound examples. So that way you kind of have an understanding of what is happening here uh, while I'm tweaking knobs. Now, just like a normal 1176, you've got input and output for channel one, input, output for channel two. The harder you drive the input, the more you turn the input in up, the more compression you get. That's how you trigger the compression. The higher the input, the more compression, and then you would level balance with your output after compression. Then, uh, so you have one for each channel. So then you have your attack and release knobs, basically just like from a normal 1176. But what a lot of people don't understand about these settings on an 1176 is that it, you have to think of it like a gas pedal on a car. The higher the number, the faster it is. So this is actually slowest attack. And as we turn it here, that becomes highest or fastest attack. And same with the release. We're on fastest release. As we turn it down, we're going slower. That's the slowest release. And this is the fastest release. Next up, you have the controls that make this really, really special. First up, compression blend. This is your wet dry. So this is 100% wet. And as you turn it down, you get drier and drier. Then you have your stereo switch, which is two independent compressors or stereo linked together. More on this in a minute, because this is not actually two stereo or two completely independent compressors necessarily. There's some interesting activity that, that happens between these two. So we're gonna get to that in a second. Then you've got your high pass side chain filter, which goes from off to 80 Hertz and then to 120 if I can, yeah, there we go. Hard to do this with one hand. Uh, and this is again, one of the things that makes this so, so special because between this compression blend, this wet dry knob and the high pass side chain, 
This brings all of that wonderful classic 1176 character that's one of the best, most versatile, most well-rounded compressors ever made. It brings it into, you know, up to 2024 standards, so to speak, because uh, parallel compression with the blend and side chaining has become such an integral part of how we mix nowadays. It's just awesome to see this on a compressor that also still has the flavor of the original. Okay, so obviously we have to start on drum bus. And so I'm gonna start playing some music for you. Uh, this, These drums are completely raw, and then I'm gonna put the compressor in. Obviously the volume is gonna drop because a compressed signal is quieter than an uncompressed signal. But I'm just gonna play through all the controls and let you hear what this sounds like on a drum bus. Here we go. So completely dry. And in. output up. Now I'm smacking this pretty hard. Let's chill it out at first here. Let's go with attack first. I will say, I feel like the range on the release is huge. That gets really slow if you want it that way. I prefer mine just off fastest, so there's fastest. Right there. You can almost hear it get just a tiny bit less pumpy as you pull this back, as you pull the release just a little bit slower. Let's do high pass side chain, so 80. hear that low end of the kick drum not grabbing nearly as hard. I think I like 80 better. Nah, it's really, I like both of them equally. Let's go up to 120 and then let's get more compression here. Trying to level this in real time for you guys. Okay, parallel compression. Now listen to how this just starts opening way up. Now it's gonna get louder because we're blending in the uncompressed signal, but listen to this. Parallel compression. Versus off. Then you got your ratios, of course. Let's go all the way to compressed so you can really hear the difference here. So, four to one. Crazy. 
parallel compression on all buttons in on a stereo 1176. That's so dope. Wow. Okay, let's... Okay, let's go for some acoustic guitar here. So this is no compression at all. Now, I personally like to grab acoustic guitar so that it kind of grabs the, the I adjust the attack so that way the pick strokes kind of pop out. stereo here, which is going to tie the detector circuit together. Let's talk about that for a second. So when you switch this to stereo, uh, you still have independent control over the input and the output. Uh, remember that if this is pulled down so there's some dry signal coming through, uh, you're in full parallel mode. So that means that even if you turn the output of channel one all the way down, there's going to still be sound coming out of channel one or the left channel because you have this parallel turned down. So since there is two detectors, two detector circuits in here, and there's two inputs and two outputs, but a single attack and release, when you have it in stereo mode, there's some interesting things that happen here. The first thing is that whichever input is higher, that's what's gonna trigger the compression. So it doesn't matter which one of these is higher, whichever one of them is higher is setting your amount of compression. So let me show you that. I turn this all the way down and you can see both channels are still compressing the same but as soon as I turn this one higher than this one it takes over so there's some interesting things that happen there uh, and also you obviously only have one attack and one release now you can run this in two separate things if you want kick on one side and and uh, snare on the other side, or if you want acoustic guitar on one uh, and snare on the other, you can dial it in that way. Now you could certainly use this. The other place that I think this would shine is on like background vocals, gang vocals, or like if you have like a subgroup for all your harmonies and your doubles and your triples, and you wanted compression on all of them, like on, a, on an all vocal bus minus the lead vocal, this would be awesome for that. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those examples pulled up. Because uh, I haven't done a song like that in a long time, and I'd have to dig for a song where I did that technique to show you that. But I think this would be awesome on that. But I have a feeling the vast majority of people that are getting into this or that are looking at this are doing so for drum bus, and obviously acoustic guitar is awesome. I always record acoustic guitar in stereo. And so it's always been a, a pain point for me that I always have to have two compressors or a stereo compressor if I want hardware on my acoustic guitars and this is certainly an awesome option. Now one of the other things that is very cool about this blend knob is that I use parallel compression on every drum no matter what. Uh, I always 
use two drum buses in parallel and I put compression on one of them. This takes away the need to do that if I just want parallel compression because I've got the knob right here. So just having this one knob in my drum bus compressor will make my entire routing system easier if all I'm trying to do is have parallel compression. Now I do a lot of times use automation on the uncompressed parallel drum bus and I, I use the uncompressed bus to, to write volume automation for the drums. But for people that don't do that, this is this is killer. That is the Audioscape AS78. I'll put a link down below to Audioscape's website if you wanna go grab one. Now, the best way to get your hands on Audioscape gear is to follow them on Instagram, and I'll put their Instagram down below as well because they, I think twice a week, they do product drops, and they'll post earlier in the day, I think it's Wednesdays and Saturdays, and they'll post earlier in the day what all is going up for sale, and so the very best thing to do is to create a profile on their website, get all your payment info already put in and saved under your profile, so that way when the sale goes live twice a week, you can add the thing, whatever you're looking for, add it to cart and purchase right away, because just about everything they post sells out just about every time they post it. And I know these are gonna sell really fast. So I'll put links to all that down below. Go check them out if you're interested in this. I'm a drum bus compression snob. This is gonna be great on acoustic guitar and on a bunch of other things. But really for my drum bus, it, it might have just beat everything out. So for the longest time, I used to use a TubeTech LCA 2B for my drum bus. It is still one of the very greatest compressors ever made, in my opinion. It's hands down my favorite vocal compressor. It is one of my all-time favorite drum bus compressors, and it sounds great on absolutely everything. But for the past year now, or maybe a little over a year, I've been using the Audioscape 260 VU on my drum bus, and it just has this character, this like smack and this like splat to it that just makes drums really exciting. But there's a difference in the overall character of them. The AS78 just makes everything just a little deeper and a little thicker and a little gooier, mainly when you slow down the attack. So let me know in the comments down below if you would like a shootout of my favorite drum bus compressors because that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. But I am very, very pumped to have this in here now. And likely what will happen is depending on the character of the song, either the 260 or the AS78 will get used. If I want a bigger, beefier, gooier sort of thing, the AS78, and if I want something splattier and more smacky sounding, then I'll go with the 260. That's probably where they'll, they'll live right next to each other and, and get traded off on every song will, is what I'm thinking will happen here. Cannot recommend this enough. I, I love what Audioscape does and I love the guys down there. They're the best people. These are all hand built in Florida, which is kind of insane for the price point. There's literally an assembly line and they are hand built right here in the US which is nuts that they can do that at this price point. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and drop me a comment and let me know what you think. And if you really liked it, share it with your friends. Those things, any sort of subscribing and giving me a thumbs up and leaving a comment, and especially when you share this video, it really, really helps out. Uh, it helps the channel and helps these videos do well. So thank you guys so much for the interaction, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Yeah.